Good evening. In accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 1046 PL 1975 C231 S1 amended 2006 C70 S2, the Asbury Park Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known the agenda of this meeting to the Asbury Park Press and the new poster on January 4th, 2019 by email. Copies of this notice have also been placed at the Administration Building, Bulletin Board, District Schools, Asbury Park Municipal Building, Asbury Park Police Department, and filed with the City Clerk on January 4th, 2019. Our mission statement is that the Asbury Park School District will provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education where everyone possesses the skills and character to succeed in a diverse, evolving global society. Mr. Hastings, roll call, please. Ms. Breach. Mr. Grillo. Here. Ms. Jones. Mr. LaRocca? Here. Ms. Lazinski? Here. Mr. Pinckney? Mr. Saunders? Ms. Etienne? Here. Ms. Alexanderson? Here. Please Good evening, Mr. Pickney. Okay, we're going to start with the report of committees. And Mr. Lotaraka, are you prepared? Would you please begin? Finance, finance committee met. We're awfully loud. <laughs> oh, great and powerful Oz. <laughs> Uh, the administrators at the next cabinet meeting will be meeting with all building administrators to begin planning for the 2021 budget. Um, and along those lines, the administration will also be putting together um, figures on repurposing Barack Obama and, uh, and we can get a sense of uh, potential savings from, from that action. But starting the budget process, and uh, as we've discussed, we've got to uh, look at this information earlier and earlier as, as we deal with the challenges ahead. Uh, the second point uh, Ms. Gray met with, City Council Deputy Mayor and the Housing Authority, they're going to demolish Lincoln Village, Asbury Village, but don't know when it's going to be rebuilt. That's going to have a negative impact in terms of uh, family residents and, and therefore enrollment. We're getting started on our uh, coordination with the energy services company. Uh, there will be a mid-year budget review with the county superintendent on December 2nd. And uh, with regard to other issues, there was a discussion about bike and scooter safety. Uh, and also the social conscience project. And the second one you're going to see on the agenda, this group's currently in Newark, East Orange, and Pleasantville. They're donating uh, two washer and dryers, uh, Tide Pods, and clothing pantry to Asbury District for students to use, those students who may be subject to uh, harassment or bullying due to um, not having uh, not, not having clean clothes, not having access to laundry facilities. So uh, we feel like that's, uh, that's something that's uh, going to be of benefit to, to some of our students. They'll also be teaching financial literacy, life skills, parenting, resume writing, and other, other kinds of topics. Uh, also, you, you may have seen on social media, we're doing a free movie night uh, at the Paramount. Uh, I believe it's Finding Nemo, or is it? Is, and yeah. Uh, uh, and one of the things that we want to, uh, we've talked about both administration and the board, different ways of connecting with the community, being out there in different ways can only help us in terms of our approach to 
attract families and, and students to our district schools. And that concludes the report. Thank you, Mr. Lauderaca. Uh, policy, Ms. Lazinski. We didn't have a meeting this month because the only thing on the agenda are second readings at this point. Okay, thank you. Vice President Ms. Etienne, buildings and grounds, please. Sure, we have two facilities requests. Um, we, we had two facilities requests submitted, uh, one by Delta Jam, uh, Gems, one by uh, Sports Farm. Both were uh, working with our local children in the district. Um, did we get all the paperwork, Mr. Hastings? Yes, we have paperwork from both organizations. Okay, so they're both on the agenda for tonight. Um, the comprehensive uh, maintenance plan is on the agenda for tonight, and it's due by uh, November 15th. The plan allocates uh, the minimum, the minimum um, expenditures needed to maintain all the facilities. Um, we're scheduled to meet with the um, energy service companies um, for them to come up and discuss upcoming projects to review the energy audit. Um, all the schools have their walkthroughs by, oh, we have a Buildings and Grounds Committee walkthrough uh, for Bradley, and that would be, you can't hear me? Oh, that would be all the schools uh, for the year. Um, so far, that's it, that's all we have. Okay. Any questions? At, at the meeting, we, we didn't have all the all the documentation, and on the, the sports farm request, as I looked at it, they're looking to waive our out-of-pocket expenses as well, correct? Yes. I don't think we as a committee discussed that, but I would be um, moving to amend to waive the non- out-of-pocket expenses when we get to that point in the agenda. Yeah, I think we talked about it a little bit, but yeah, we didn't really discuss the out-of-pocket because I think when we talked about the days that were covered, there were custodians on for most of the days, except that there were Sundays on there, if I, if I can recall, right? Yes, there's two so days, the 26th, 27th, I believe it was. Okay, so the Saturday, the Saturday and the Sunday. Okay. So the Saturday we wouldn't have, uh, we already have custodians on, except for, you said something about the person going back and forth. Right, so in the past we've tried to use the Saturday custodian to monitor activities at the stadium as well, but it becomes a little too difficult to have one person traveling back and forth and do work in the building and monitor the bathrooms and other areas of the stadium. So we would have another custodian on for the okay. stadium area. Okay. So I think now we, so Mr. Hastings, you computed that number and now we had it on the form. I think that's what we didn't have at the meeting. So that number would be the out of pocket for, for Sunday or, or what, whatever the, the cost would be. Yes, yeah, so on page C4, number 9B. Mr. Sosa has computed the fees associated with the request. Custodial fees of $1,080. The field is $1,300. And then they are using scoreboards, uh, PA, and those sorts of things, which is the additional $1,100. So the total there is $3,530, and they're asking that we waive those fees. Okay, so our out-of-pocket would be the custodian, and when we do the equipment, are we having a... Um a person there to operate the equipment? Yes. Our own person? Yes, we have our own person operate the scoreboard and PA. Okay, so built into this um, 1150 is the person's cost and the cost for the equipment? Correct. All right, so our actual out-of-pocket for the equipment is um, not the total, I mean, the, our actual out-of-pocket for personnel is not the total 1150? No, that's correct. Okay. I have a question. Do you, do you have the actual out of pocket? Can we separate that out when I'm? Okay. 
the 1150 represents lights in the scorekeeper, um, but it's not broken out that way. That's fine. I, I would just say out-of-pocket expenses would would have to be covered. And, okay, so what could we would waive do tonight the, is um, say that we're waiving the right, the and nine. then they can figure out what that okay. would be. It is what I'll, Madam President, at the at the whatever relevant time I'll make the. Okay. Okay. We'll make that motion. Well, if if that's the desire of the board, I can make that adjustment, and um, that's how it will be presented. Okay. Yes, but please. I think there was another question. Um, you have a note here that the commitment fee was due. Did they pay the commitment fee? Yes, I believe they did. Do you know what kind of games it is? The LSS is says games. I don't. Right. So I mean, just sports, out of curiosity, what kind of right. event it is? So I believe when Sports Farm initially started in the district, the uh, activities were mainly geared towards skill building for athletes. Uh, along with some mentoring and those sorts of services for our students. Uh, they have expanded a little bit, and these are three football games that will be uh, that will take place uh, with an Asbury team versus another team from another town. And it's a two-day two, two, days, two day, uh, event? Well, they've requested two days, yes. And my, my understanding is that they may amend a second date, but this is what's been presented at the time, so... This is what we should consider. What if the, what happens if they amend the second date and they want fees waived? They won't be able to get fees waived then, because they didn't include it. Correct. I'm not sure. I don't understand what. So they have two dates. They're requesting two dates right now. So what he's saying is, if they amended the second date, like if they didn't need that Sunday, they would drop it. So Sunday is is the lion's share of the uh, custodial costs. Costs. Just costs. You understand? And they know not to uh, food cooking because we had an issue with another event uh, a couple months ago. Reference uh, fires, you know, like cooking hamburgers and hot dogs and food and such. Yeah, so we've reached out to all the organizations that regularly put in facility use uh, requests. Um, those. Uh, Groups have been advised of the policies that are in effect and the practices that we expect according to our regulations. And the current fall sports teams both have met with uh, Mr. Sosa and he's discussed those issues with them and they've moved uh, any cooking off property. Well, if you want, we can do, because I plan on doing, um, remember we do the, the review of the rules and regulations with our uh, class twos especially. So we can uh, schedule that for January so we can go over it again. And at that point in time, we can have signatures taken from each group saying that they understand the rules and regulations and that they'll abide by them. We'll just do that on a yearly basis so that, to reiterate. Yeah? Yes. It's a suggestion. Yes. That's fine. Yes. I had one other question. I'm sorry. Oh, there's no uh, billing address to send a bill to. It just has an email. Do you do that electronically now, or do you uh, still mail uh, correspondence when you're uh, doing doing POs and the such? If there's something like that that's required, just a question. These are all folks familiar with us, so in some cases we do email uh, to email addresses. If we need to send it to a uh, physical location, uh, we have the phone numbers and obviously the email to contact that person uh, should we need to reach out to them through the mail. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you, Madam Vice President. Mr. Pickney, curriculum and instruction, please. Okay, um, <clears throat> in addition to uh, some conferences and and grants among um, one of those grants is uh, we're looking to get more funds for allied health um, to expand our program to be able to offer students the opportunity to graduate with a skill or trade in the health industry. Um, also uh, spoke about um, early childhood department 
collaborating with Central Urgent Care to provide 60 vouchers for flu vaccinations. Um, another thing we discussed was um, Small Factory Innovations, Inc. Uh, to provide um, Thurgood Marshall, um, um, Bradley and um, Martin Luther King Middle School with Silas. Uh, Silas is a browser-based software that allows students to act out social scenes using video games, pads, and microphones to control their own 3D avatar. Um, and also discuss uh, the Social Conscious Project. Uh, that's a nonprofit uh, 501c3 charity uh, that will provide programming and donating three to four washers and dryers and supplies. Um, and also, um, whenever some of the school trips that are being recommended, and that ends my report. Thank you, Mr. Pickney. Ms. Breach? I just had one question, if I may. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse um, me. I forgot to ask. The uh, Small Factory Innovations and their, and their um, program, is what, what's the target group for social-emotional learning? Because we have a lot of uh, that in-house. Is there a specific group of children that would, you know, benefit from the computer module? What number was that, Ms. Lisinski? That's uh, six, uh, number 16 on uh, B, it's B6, number 16, Small oh, okay. Factory Innovations. Yes, Mr. Um, Mr. Bramley brought this um, one on board. It's generally, we use it for our special ed students, especially the ones that are a little bit more nonverbal. Um, so it'll be rolled out to all the schools through the program. Um, they provided us a couple of licenses early, so you might have seen maybe on Twitter some of the kids already um, kind of playing with the program and actually interacting and socializing with one another. We're using their little avatars and, and talking. So it's generally targeted to students. Um, we can use it, the counselors can use it with any student who's feeling some kind of anxiety or anything like that, um, but generally targeting a lot of our special ed population. Any other questions? Thank you. Ms. Breach? Athletics. I'm not sure where we're at as far as the questions, but I do have some questions. I'll, I'll do in the committee reports. Just, just committee reports. Well, everybody knows what tomorrow is. So um, that's pretty much what we've been planning uh, the last meetings. I just wanted to ask while I'm here, board members that plan on participating in the parade tomorrow, can I just, Madam President, are you going to participate? Okay, and uh, Madam Vice President? You? I'm going to be setting up with you. Yeah. Um, Dominic? Eric, you're going to drive, right? No, Dominic? Okay. And just for our viewing audience. Just for our viewing audience, what are you referring to? The uh, parade that's going to start at 4 o'clock from the municipal complex. Which is our homecoming. Which is our homecoming parade, which will feature our, our court, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior class. Um, also, various sports teams are... Football, popcorn, AYF, um, cheerleading. I'm not sure they were going to have a DJ. I'm not sure if that's going to on one of the trailers. I'm not positive, but um, they're going to have four different trailers that the classes are working on right now, and they, they look pretty cool. They they're just doing them inside. The trailers are coming tomorrow. Um, then we'll have some convertibles for our court, and I uh, should have at least three, four convertibles for our board members. We do have one already assigned for. Um, our superintendent, and I have one assigned for uh, Madam President and Madam Vice President, okay. and the rest of us are going to be kind of hanging out with the, the other two that I have coming. I have to get one detail tomorrow. But the game starts at 6 o'clock. We are featuring um, the Nines, the class of the Nines, or their our anniversary alumni. More specifically, class of 1969, which is our, our 50th anniversary class. We are going to have an honorary captain um, for the game, and I think everybody knows who this uh, man is. Coach Leroy Hayes is going to be our honorary captain, and um, I have a not really a throwback jersey, but the best I could do. And he's going to have his uh, old number 18, and he's going to be able to wear that on the sideline. He will officiate the uh, the coin toss at the beginning of the game, followed by the national anthem. So that's kind of, and then of course at halftime, we will have the announcement of our court. I think it's that's about it. Well, thank you, Ms. Breach. I'm looking forward to it tomorrow. And uh, thank you for all the hard work. And uh, we do have a new tent coming tomorrow, temporarily. One, our tent kind of got 
caught up in that major windstorm we had last night. So we kind of had a, well, Mr. Sosa did some running around today that we were able to secure a tent for tomorrow last minute. Thank you again. Are there any questions? Okay, that completes our committees. And now we have public participation in accordance with board policy 0167. If you have a comment or concern, please come to the podium, state your name, address, and you have three minutes, please. Seeing that there isn't anyone, public participation is now closed. Good evening, members of the board. Are there any questions related to any items on page B1? B2? If you get there, tell me what. B3? B4? B5? B6, B7, and B8. Ms. Breach? I have a question on B1, uh, letter B. We don't have, um, maybe we're just waiting for the next meeting. There's no head boys basketball it's coach? The it's on the addendum. I'm sorry. That's okay. Any questions at all? And I see some of you are scrolling through, so I'll give it a few minutes. <laughs> I do have one more question on that same item. Yes. Um, down where we have the assistant assistant wrestling coach. It's not on the addendum, so I, I guess I'm okay with that. There's two assistant wrestling coaches for the middle school, but there's no head coach. And then there's also two head coach bowling for the high school, but no assistant. I know is that just, just curious on that. Oh, middle school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I you, see, you see what I mean? Yes. I'm sure it might be a typo. I'm not sure, but. Wrestling, excuse me, bowling, is, there's girls and boys bowling. So that's why it's two column head coach. Okay, so there's one's, for, one's boys and one's girls? Yes. Just, and what about wrestling? You have, two, you have two assistant wrestling coaches for the middle school, but there's no head coach listed for the middle school. The head coach would be the high school coach. So it's just like football. You have a head coach, and then all the other coaches are assistants. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Mr. Hastings. Thank you, Madam President. Be happy to take any questions on uh, C1 through C5. And I'd like to point out on page C, two donations. One scholarship donation from uh, Mr. Derek Griggs on behalf of the Aberic Investment Group, um, and the donation of the two washer and dryers uh, that are associated with the Social Conscious Project. Okay, questions? Lataraka, did you want to address the uh, use of facilities for that one group? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, with regard to, it's on C4, I, I can't find the C49B. What page of the attachment? Does anybody have that? 75. I would amend uh, that. I would move to amend that item to waive 
the rental fee and all non-out-of-pocket expenses only. Well, I, I think Mr. Hastings, though, can, can change the item if there's, if there's a record of majority. If there was any discussion, if anybody had anything that they wanted to add or anything to say, and then, like you said, we'll have Mr. Hastings take care of the rest. Yeah, what can happen is uh, Mr. Hastings can, uh, when he's calling for his uh, consent agenda, that item can be amended uh, to reflect whatever it is that the board wants to uh, include in the amendment, and then you'll vote on that amended uh, motion or resolution. Why don't you just um, make, since the, it's the uh, committee that's recommending that, maybe the committee can recommend it, you can change it now and just add it to the agenda changed, you know, since the committee's recommending it, and then the board can vote however they wish. Yes, so when I present it, I'll present it as personnel fees only during the regular session. Need a motion to adjourn. Excuse me, Madam President, I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Um, attached to our agenda are the action plan uh, items. Did we want, and they're on the agenda. Do we want to go over the what was submitted to us? So just in case I sure. have a couple comments. Sure. Would you like to go over them now? Yeah, because I had a couple comments okay. up, about. So one. So all of you have your uh, board goals, your action plan. So I'm leaving that open for discussion now. You had questions, Ms. Lazinski? Uh, I just um, wanted to know, um, for example, um, uh, developing and implementing the plan for professional development. Um, every quarter, do you, do you have an estimate of what a quarter is, like say the month of whatever or what quarter from June to whatever? Is that what you're saying? Yes. So Ms. Weinkoff was out, uh, I believe, last month to help the board, maybe it was in August, to help the board develop goals and work through that process. Uh, so these are the goals that uh, were presented uh, out of that process, um, which I've emailed to everybody. Um, I believe what we can do next is school boards has a listing of various trainings that are available that Ms. Weinkoff could present to the board. So uh, over the next two, two months or so, I think we should schedule something with her before she gets booked up and then every uh, three months or so after that. So we're going to have, I and guess... And we could, we could do it more frequently if if the board finds more trainings that they, uh, you know, uh, feel are, are relevant to what we're doing. How often would you like to have trainings? I'm just saying if it's quarterly, I guess four, then say four trainings or, you know, it's mm -hmm. up to the, it doesn't have to happen like every... Three so months, I think if, could, if the board comes up with you five... You could do two in one night if you right, want If they to. come up with five sessions that they'd like to, to take or have Ms. Weinkoff present, you know, we could schedule it accordingly. But okay. uh, generally speaking, we'll try to do one per quarter. And uh, the other thing I just had a question on, um, the communication protocols. I understood some of the conversation was also communication not only between board members but with the board and the administration, you know, about... and I. I remember mentioning um, updates on board goals. We were going to update board goals quarterly and also uh, district goals quarterly when, when they are developed. And then um, one of the other items we said was to submit uh, committee agendas and, and then uh, minutes to all the board members. Uh, we had those three discussions, so I wanted to add those if everybody agreed to it. Well, I think what we're doing is adopting the goals that the board uh, discussed with Ms. Weinkoff. We can amend the action plans as needed, and we'll certainly uh, amend them as, as the board recommends uh, over the next week or so, or, or however long that takes, and we can 
continue to amend them as we go forward uh, to help us meet the, the four goals that have been set forth. No, I understand. I just didn't know if the board would like to add those three items because they were discussed that night and I thought we had a agreement. I, I would suggest, yeah, with regard to goal four, just uh, uh, I agree in, in what our discussions were that it was improved communication between members of the board and the administration. And that would be, I mean, that would be a, a recommendation. I'm, I'm not sure what, Jeff, if, if your minutes reflected something else, but that, that was my recollection. And then I agree with you re with regard to specific action plans, they can be developed and modified as, as we go along. Can uh, amend it. That's why you were given this, so that we can discuss it tonight, and then we can make amendments to it right. to so the I, action plan. I believe what the suggestion is is on page A two, item number eleven, goal four, that we amend goal four to say that the develop communication protocols to improve communication between board members of the board of education and administration or and the Board of Education and Administration? I would say just, yeah, the word and the administration, right? Right at the end. Is that the consensus of the board? We'll make that adjustment. Are there any other comments regarding the action plan? Ms. Lezinski? No. Mr. Lataraka? Mr. Pickney? Ms. Breach? No. Mr. Saunders? No. Mr. Grillo? No, no question. Madam Vice President? No. And none from me. Okay, thank you. Motion to adjourn. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, we will be back at 7 o'clock. Good evening. In accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act NJSA 1046 PL 1975. There she is. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> In accordance with the provision, oh, first of all, good evening. In accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 1046 PL 1975, C231S1 amended 2006 C70S2, the Asbury Park Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known, the agenda of this meeting to Asbury Park Press, the new coaster on January 4th, 2019 by email. Copies of this notice have also been placed at the Administration Building Bulletin Board, District Schools, Asbury Park Municipal Building, Asbury Park Police Department, and filed with the City Clerk on January 4th. Our mission statement, Asbury Park School District, will provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education where everyone possesses the skills and character to succeed in a diverse, evolving global society. Mr. Hastings, roll call, please. Ms. Breach? Here. Mr. Crillo? Here. Ms. Jones? Mr. Lataraka? Here. Ms. Lazinski? Here. Mr. Pinckney? Here. Mr. Saunders? Here. Ms. Etienne? Here. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Here. Okay, uh, please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Superintendent, 
I understand that we have a presentation this evening. That is correct. Um, under where it says superintendent's presentation, this uh, presentation will be provided to us by Dr. Adams, our director of planning, assessment, and research. And he will be presenting the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment part slash park data. Uh, we don't have a pack house, I don't think, unless I need to talk into the microphone. Um, okay. So, good evening. Uh, Dr. Rashawn Adams, uh, Director of Planning Research and Assessment. Uh, this evening, I will be presenting the Asbury Park School District 2019 three to four year uh, NJSLA Park Achievement Results. Um, I would like to thank on um, part of the district, Superintendent Gray, along with supervisors, Ms. Kimmy Taylor and Ms. Anna Marie Graff, as well as Director uh, Ruiz for supporting and putting this uh, uh, report, rather this presentation together. Um, in your possession is a printout, and although uh, small in print, um, does uh, kind of reflect up the same presentation up here. So if you have questions, you can, uh, those on this side of the table can uh, turn around and uh, see the presentation, okay? So the first slide really deals with the changes to the statewide assessment, dealing with uh, the exemptions that are being made, um, as well as the uh, pathways in terms of the timing from 75 minutes to 90 minutes. Uh, as well as the number of sections um, that uh, have been administered or will be administered in the change from the park to the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment. Here is the actual copy of the documentation from the NJDOE that uh, outlines those same expectations that was in the previous slide. Uh, what we wanted to do also was to highlight our SAT cohort data. This is just a new part of our presentation where we want to begin to look at college and career readiness and with our um, career and, and um, CTEs, but we also wanted to look at our SAT uh, performance results. So in 2019, we have 55 students uh, with a mean score of 777, and then we look at the uh, state at 1149. Uh, but that information is also there. And again, we're projecting to increase uh, our SAT results, I mean, our SAT participation. Uh, just yesterday, we had the PSAT at the high school, and we had a full uh, level of participation from some of our undergraduate, I mean, not undergraduates, our underclassmen, excuse me. Again, additional changes in terms of the high school requirements, um, instead of taking uh, for ninth grade and 10th grade ELA, um, also, some exemptions. Those students in 10th grade taking Algebra 1, demonstrating proficiency, there are a couple of exemptions that students can utilize, such as the ACT, SAT, and the ASVAB, which is the Military Placement Assessment, as well as the Accuplacer. We actually have students that are presently in our Dream Scholars, in our Dream Academy, who actually have taken the Accuplacer who are students at Brookdale. We actually have four cohorts of students in our at Asbury Park High School uh, with our incoming freshmen will be the fourth cohort to actually take the Accuplacer, okay? Which allows them to earn college credits. Uh, again, in order to uh, utilize one of the alternative options, students must have participated and earned a score in English 10 and Algebra 1 assessment. Again, this is a copy of where we are in terms of our SAT performance overall. And again, this is our baseline. This is where we wanna start and begin to look at this year as we move progressively forward with having our students in the Dream Academy, as well as other students who are eligible for the uh, Project Promise program at the other uh, schools. Um, this past year, 2018, 2019, um, we had uh, 1042 in 2018 take 
the NJSLA, and we had 10, 11, excuse me, 1,011 students uh, take the uh, NJSLA in English for our districts grade three through 10. Again, that uh, information is in the slide. And I wanted to give you this background information so as we get to the actual data, you'll be able to, uh, kind of, I'll be able to kind of walk you through it and then get to the analysis at the end. Again, this was the math. Uh, in 2018, we had 1,100, excuse me, 1,127 students take the NJSLA in 2018. And in 2019, we had 1,057. This is reflective of our student enrollment decrease as well. Again, the NJSLA performance levels, level one through five, uh, are the levels, and that's in there, and the delineations are there for you to uh, see for yourself. Again, three, levels three and four mean students are meeting or exceeding um, grade level expectations. And, and five, exceeding grade level expectations. Again, this slide is a little small, but what I want to do is uh, pinpoint you over here. Again, this is our 2018-2019 NJLSA data. If you look over here, um, it says levels one and two. You'll see grades three, four, and five on our outside columns, and you'll see our levels of performance in those grades over 17, 18, 19, over the three-year span in each of the levels, level one, two, three, four, and five. Here is where the analysis is in those, in those numbers. You'll see negative um, in third grade, you'll see negative 14.9 and a negative 9.1 um, in those numbers. Uh, and then you'll see where the numbers increase uh, each going across the board. And what that really means is we really want to see a decrease in levels one and two, and we want to see an increase in levels four and five. And you'll see there's a, an analysis that I'll get to where we see a um, increase here, we do see a decrease in our levels three and four. Okay, so it, there's sort of like that balancing scale. Okay, um, so as we kind of go through in our ELA, uh, we had 0.1%, but in our four or five levels, we increased 4.6%. Uh, we decreased minus 2.5. We ended up going up 3.5. So in this column is really where we, the analysis of our improvement and our steady gains have really shown over the time because this is the uh, three-year analysis, okay? So again, in uh, last year, we had a 15.8 increase. We decreased in levels one and two by 6.3. So going down in this one and two is a positive thing for the district. Increasing on this side is a positive for the district. Again, here is that analysis in terms of the same numbers that I just gave, in terms of our state, here's our analysis in levels one and two, three and four and five. Again, we want to look at where we are in four and five, and you look at us in comparison to the state. The state increased in levels four and five at 1.5, we increased 4.6%. So we, again, we don't want to look at proficiency, we want to look at growth, where we are, where we're moving, and how much we've been able to improve. Again. That's, I think, a benchmark of where and how much work that we have been doing, okay? So when you look um, here, we've outpaced in grade six, 15.8 to the state's 2.8. So, um, and I'll get into later analysis again, so I wanna kind of move through these slides. They, they are there if you have questions. Okay, this was for ELA. Again, in math, mathematics, uh, the same analysis here, looking at decreasing and increasing. We do know that we are working on our mathematical areas in terms of our content capacity for our staff, as well as ensuring that our intervention programs are being used to support our foundational uh, growth throughout the system. Again, here, we're looking at levels four and five. We're accessing on-grade curriculum and exceeding on-grade curriculum. So 
Um, I want to just take a second to look at our Algebra 1, and it kind of goes back to our SAT area. The state had a one point, one point percentage increase. We had an 8.9% increase. That's in Algebra 1. Again, we want to talk about how we're accessing high, higher levels of academic rigor with students taking Algebra 1, coming out of our elementary schools into our middle schools and accessing this content in high school. So when we look at ge uh, geometry, 1.1%, we were at 9.1%. Okay? Again, th this is the work that the staff and the students are engaged in. And then when we look here, Algebra 2, 0.3, we were at 54.2%. So that's a huge uptick for us by almost over 50% increase in Algebra 2. These are hot, this is, we're not at calculus, but we're in our lane, we're running our race, and we are succeeding in our lane, in our race. We're, we're not concerned about what the next heap is, we're focused on this race right now. Okay. So again, when we look at the five-year trends in ELA, I really want to pinpoint you to... Good afternoon, fellas. <laughs> Some of those are my students. <laughs> um, so when we look at 1415 and we look at the district, these numbers can give us a false sense of hope, right? We, 14, 15, 10, 15, 16, 12, 16, 17, 14, 17, 18, 16, and then 18, 19, 17. But if you look over these years, we have steadily improved. No, these numbers are not in the, above the 60s, but we are seeing increases, and we're making incremental changes, and we're seeing percentage changes, and our growth is on par and outpacing some of the growth that has taken place in other districts. Okay, mathematics, we can see our numbers again moving towards increasing, so we're not decreasing. Again, this is the analysis that we've done in terms of in-house looking at the data that was presented to you previously. This is over a four-year trend. These are our current seventh graders looking at our cohort of students. So current seventh grade students in ELA right now. Previously, the last year they were at 19, they've increased to 24. Our current eighth graders have shown progress, had a slight dip, but then increased. Again, we're seeing our present ninth graders who are at the high school right now, our present 10th graders going from ninth grade to 29%, which made the biggest gains last year. Our present 11th graders, again, the content and the capacity and the rigor changes through each year. So these students are experiencing a level of different expectations as they get themselves really ready to take higher level, uh, higher level content. And then when we look at all grades over this, over this time period, we're looking at from last year to this year, a 4% increase where we started off at 10% of the year before. And this here, right here, grades seven to 11 over the last four years are students who've been directly engaged with our intervention programs. So our intervention programs are clearly indicating that they're giving us the foundational skills, our students the foundational skills to access on-grade curriculum. And as Ms. Gray said, we're moving to the next level. We've kind of put up all the foundation and the structures in order for our students to access on-grade curriculum. And this is showing it in the area of ELA. Again, we want to highlight where we are in current, our, our, our current seventh grade students as well. Our present 10th grade students, we did not have enough data here to show that in 20, uh, excuse me, 18, 19, they improved by you know, 6% and then the present 11th graders as well. So these were some of our key areas that we're having conversations during our uh, common planning. The Director of Curriculum and Instruction is working with the supervisors as well as we're working intently with our building administrators to work on 
uh, um, implementing their annual school plans, which are directly assessing the standards that our students have struggled with in the past. Again, these are our ELL proficiency, looking at our students who uh, here, uh, 15, 16. This is elementary, middle, and high school over the last four years. So when we look at where we are uh, in terms of last year, we've seen um, steady increases or consistency in terms of our elementary schools between last year and this year, we've seen an increase in terms of our middle school as well as our high school in terms of our uh, ELL students. This is our math, uh, mathematics area in terms of their cohort. Looking here, present fifth graders, our present sixth graders, increasing from previous year and our present seventh graders making a, a huge increase, and we're working on sustaining um, our mathematics uh, with our new program that we've implemented this year um, at the middle school. And again, these are our multi-exceeding um, over the last few years. If you look at um, Algebra 1 and 15, 16, we have 5%. We didn't have any students accessing geometry or algebra two. We had 2% in 17, 16, 17, another 2%, but then last year we had 11% increase, a 9% increase. Again, we look here, 18 in algebra two, from 14 to 54. And looking at our elementary schools, our student cohorts, again, we see our present 10th graders um, in terms of same students, and this is for our special ed students. So we're seeing successes take place um, in each of our main areas. ELL and mathematics, again, last year, we've seen a 10% jump, excuse me, a 9% jump from the high school uh, we've seen a little decrease, and again, we can talk about some of the services that we're providing for our um, middle school students in terms of uh, our new entry students into the country um, and, and looking at supporting them in terms of the English language learners. Any questions? When I looked at the information this afternoon when it was sent to me, I was truly amazed thinking that, you know, reading would be easier than math, and I was surprised about the increase in the math skills as opposed to literacy. That's what really amazed me, especially when they're doing algebra two and geometry. Well, that's really consistent with a lot of the research in terms of mathematics is not necessarily the finite understanding of the, how English language is learned. And if you talk to anyone in, in the field, English is probably one of the most complex languages there is because of uh, the, the, the many w words and how they're used. So math is a universal common content. So we should expect to see, because it's not a reflection of students' cognitive ability, uh, it's a, a reflection of their understanding of the language differences. And so when we have students coming in, as we do, some of them coming in first tier, um, students not having, having limited um, schooling experiences in their native country. So mathematics is one of those easier subjects for them to grasp because it's computation, it's understanding, it's reasoning and rationale and, 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 and their rational skills. Um, but with, the, with language, it's a little more challenging. Any other questions? Mr. Ladaraka? Uh, let's, let's go to the slide, uh, the four-year ELA growth of uh, Good slide was that, sir. Okay. This one here? Right. All right. Okay, so there, there's progress, uh, uh, making progress everywhere with the exception of 11th graders. Are you able to bore into the data as to the specific 
weaknesses, and then are we doing unique interventions when we see that kind of data result? Yes. Um, actually, I met with the high school principal, Ms. Kathy Baumgarten, who's sitting in the front row, um, and we discussed her annual school plan. As you know, each school has to uh, produce an annual school plan that goes to the DOE. Just yesterday, was it yesterday or Monday? Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, Ms. Baumgarten and I discussed because we had to identify the 10 struggling standards in each of the grade levels at her building and devise a plan to address those particular standards that are impacting uh, the results in ELA as well as math, as well as looking at the subgroups, special ed, as well as ELL. So that is part of her annual part school of our plan. Approach. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the second question, just about casting aspersions on the state, but they seem to change their, their measurement devices at times or, or the rules of, of the game. If we as a board were, would ask every two months to have some information on, on academic performance rather than the you know, I think, the, didn't the state go through one year as they were switching tests or something, they were delayed in doing it and all of that. So if I, if I was asking every two months to see some kind of data on academic performance, are we doing any standardized internal things or, or are there so things you're that asking, could be what, How are we measuring before we get to this point in the year and taking a formal, a, a summative assessment? Is that what you're basically that, That's asking? basically what I'm asking, because so, sitting here as a board member, it's sort of like we're, we're waiting for that, that so you, you, one you're year not checking, announcement. You're not checking the engine to see if you're running out of oil, yeah, so to speak. Yeah. So yes, we do have that in place. It's called Lincoln. We have those interim assessments. Um, we do utilize that. They are based upon um, the uh, standards that are assessed on the NJSLA. Um, but I've been in this profession now 23 years, and I go back to ESPA. I think every time um, most schools begin to get a foothold in making some achievements, the parameters and the metrics change. So that's par for the course in terms of the state's uh, changing. And I'm not blaming the state for that, but the state does what it does. Our job is to make those adjustments and deal with the student population that we have. And we're doing that internally. We have the uh, Lincoln assessment. We have our RI and MI uh, assessment data for our interventions, as well as we're now utilizing teacher-made assessments and putting them in Lincoln that are based upon the standards. That's what we talked about with uh, each of the principals in order to assess where our students are on the standards by the time we get to this point. So, so those yes. numbers could be crunched quarterly for the board or something like that? Those, 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 uh, that information is given um, as, as we take them. That, that information is, can be it made available. Okay, yes. thank you. But I would say I would, would leave that to right. Mrs. Wait, we can discuss. Yeah, if I may just interject. Um, first, I want to just commend Dr. Adams and Mr. Ruiz and Ms. Sylvia who work collaboratively with their teams, the supervisors of curriculum instruction on creating this very comprehensive uh, presentation. Job well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> to your point, Mr. Ladaraka, uh, five years ago when I arrived in the district as director of curriculum and instruction, one of the main things that we looked at in terms of this perpetual low student performance and achievement is how do we know, how do we measure, and how do we continuously follow student achievement? That was a system that was broken and did not have a mechanism in place. I'm proud to say that part of what we've done in terms of identifying the need is also making sure that we monitor what's happening. So we put in a standardized testing assessment protocol. That assessment protocol includes the review of a bench, the creation first of the expectation that we benchmark assess our students three times a year. 
So we benchmark and assess our students three times a year based on standards. So it's aligned to the standards, it's aligned to the curriculum, and it's the intersection of curriculum, instruction, assessment, and teaching and learning, right? We administer that test three times a year. In addition, we also provide what is called a reading inventory for our students so that we can gauge their lexile growth. How do we know our programs are working? We don't wait until the state gives us a report. We understood this before, about five years ago, that we needed to measure that. And we continue to go deeper in those conversations. Our team, guided by the Director of Curriculum Instruction and the supervisors, specifically one that's sitting here tonight with us, Kimmy Taylor, works with our instructional coaches in our common planning sessions. They review this data, they ask questions, and they use that data to also inform instructional practices. That's the whole system of how we improve teaching and learning. And so the transference is what you're seeing tonight in tonight's presentation. The summation of all of that comes out of our state assessment. Our student representative has a question for you, Dr. Adams. You mentioned direct engagement, and I was wondering how does it raise our seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th graders, but it lacked in our 11th graders, and how are you gonna improve that? So one of the things that I uh, do in conjunction with the building is we do something called walkthroughs. So when you see us uh, walking into the classrooms, uh, one of the ways in which you improve those results is by really directly identifying the aspects of teaching and learning. So what is the teacher actually teaching? How is the teacher actually doing it? And then giving feedback on that instructional practice, right? And so if someone's braiding your hair and you, you're not really paying attention, then how do you know they're doing a good job, right? It's not until the end when you get the mirror and it's in your face, you're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't like that. So periodically going in and somebody holding the mirror up after they do one side, you can make adjustments. That's what the walkthroughs are designed to do. So we do that weekly um, in every school. So when you see me in the buildings or you see other directors and supervisors and we're visiting classrooms, after we visit the classrooms, we're actually going downstairs and talking about what we saw to improve the teaching and learning. Then it top dials right back to what Mrs. Gray said in terms of that continuous cycle. So the principals are then meeting with the vice principals and the coaches. The coaches are then adding support to the teachers. The teachers should be improving their instruction to the students. So the next time we come in, and the next time there's an assessment, students should understand the information much better because the teacher is aware of the best way to teach it. Okay, does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent question from our student representative. Are there any other questions from our board members? Excellent presentation. Thank you very Thank much you. to all those involved for hard work. <laughs> Madam Superintendent, your uh, report, please. Um, I just want to comment, last night we had the Hispanic Heritage Celebration. That's our, that was our district-wide celebration. We had pretty inclement weather last night, but the turnout was fantastic considering it was a windy, cold evening. That district-wide celebration, it gives a snapshot of the individual building level celebrations that have occurred. I was delighted that uh, we had board representation last night and our board member, Ms. Lazinski. And what was particularly exciting to me, in addition to seeing the celebration, is how much the uh, schools made it a point of combining the celebration aspect as well as the educational aspect. At the high school, their celebration tied so beautifully into culture and educating the uh, nuances between Puerto Rican culture and African traditional, traditional uh, culture there. And I was very delighted to see that, as well as every school represented and our parents coming out. In addition, there was a student there that had on her hoodie. And her hoodie was not an Asbury Park School District hoodie. Her hoodie was a Brookdale Community College hoodie. And I said, wow, I see you. I am so excited that you are that excited about representing 
college. And so when Dr. Adams presented our standardized test data, he mentioned that we now have four cohorts of students in our Dream Academy, which is fantastic. At every grade level, students are able to be enrolled in our dual college program where they are working on their associate's degree as well as their high school diploma at the same time. And that young lady represented uh, one of the cohorts. What Dr. Adams also mentioned is that we have the College Promise Program. And so we want to always provide comprehensive supports for all of our students. The College Promise Program is for students that are not in the Dream Academy. However, they are able to access rigorous college level work. So we provide that same experience or exposure, I should say. We provide exposure to college level coursework for students that are outside the Dream Academy. In addition, we are noticing, as was mentioned, a decrease in our enrollment. But where we see an increase in our enrollment is at the high school. And I'm so delighted that Principal Baumgartner is here today. If you look at our trend uh, year over year, you'll note that our enrollment, while it may be decreasing in our other schools at Asbury Park High School, we continue to see an increase there. Last year, our enrollment at this time was uh, based on September data was at 429. This year, we're at 468, largely attributed to the innovative programs that we have, the attraction of those innovative programs in the form of our career and technical education uh, offerings, meaning our allied health, our Project Lead the Way, which is our Engineering Academy, and our Law and Public Safety Academy, as well as the Dream Academy. So we continue to uh, look to increasing our enrollment across the board, but we are delighted to spotlight tonight our high school for um, continuously trending upward in terms of their enrollment. What should also be noted is that it's not just the programs but it's the people that are making the difference. And so this past weekend, one of the teachers, again, from Asbury Park High School, was highlighted at the International Literacy Association. The question I was asked, and with surprise, about the performance of mathematics, I concur with Dr. Adams, and that it's a universal language. Over five years ago, when we assessed the district in terms of student performance and student achievement, there was an opportunity there to make a decision. Do we focus on literacy or do we focus on math? Because we understand that if we focus on too many things at one time, you don't excel, right? You can't focus on a million things because you'll just do a little bit on each one. But if you're very thoughtful, targeted, in terms of the, the area that you want to focus on, that's where you will receive the maximum gain and benefit. About five years ago when this review was done, we noted over 75% of our students were reading below grade level in this district. Three to, half of the 75% were three to six grade levels below. And for the reasons that Dr. Adams mentioned in terms of the research for literacy, it was decided then that we would focus on literacy. And that's why I am so pleased to see that as we continue to review the data, we are coming out of a very dark hole in terms of student performance and student achievement. However, what should be noted is that the programs that we've put in place are working because what we're seeing is an uptick in student performance. And I want to just highlight that one of those teachers from Asbury Park High School was selected to present in New Orleans this past weekend for her work around how she has moved student performance and student achievement at the high school. And it bears mentioning for the record that we were very delighted that Ms. Juanita Barnes from Asbury Park High School represented Asbury Park Schools in that conference. She continues to, as well as many of the teachers in our district. So when we talk about moving student performance and student achievement, it's not 
the work of an individual, but it is the collective work of educators that are committed to our students. But she deserves and bears mentioning for the record for her fantastic, holistic approach to moving the students that have the greatest need forward. That completes my report. Madam President, I have a question, or at least a review. Um, the last meeting we were talking about um, cost per pupil, and I know there's uh, extra audience members at this meeting, and I, I wondered if we could um, just go over real quickly that the um, about the cost per pupil actually was incorrect, uh, it was reported by the state, and just go through that again. Sure. <clears throat> the state reported through the taxpayer's guide a cost per pupil of $42,000 uh, based on enrollment. Uh, upon review of the data that did not look correct to us in terms of the enrollment side, we saw that approximately 225 or so preschool students were not included uh, in the proper category when we made the adjustment and included those students in the uh, overall tally, the cost reduced uh, from the 42 down to about 36,000. Which is about what we had, what the cost was last year. Correct. Correct. It's a couple hundred dollars less. Thank you. Uh, Any I, other questions? Uh, I do. So okay, just, I, a, just a second, oh, please. Sorry. Mr. Grillo? Sure. So, um, Mr. Hastings, it was, um, so it's actually the, the total cost per pupil is $36,000 and change, right? Um, how much of that is grants and kind of that, that section of it? And so, how much is actual taxpayer dollars that are going to the cost? So the, the simple calculation that's done is total expenditures uh, divided by number of students. Right. So the total expenditure number was approximately $80 million. Uh, of that $80 million, about 13 to 14 million represents grants. So uh, in a sense, as I think Mr. Ladarock has alluded to in the past, or maybe not alluded to, but said outright, <laughs> that uh, uh, it sort of uh, punishing the district for going out and getting money uh, that can assist in, in additional programs um, uh, may raise that cost per pupil, but it's certainly well worth it to, to get those funds to to uh, supplement and allow us to uh, add additional programs uh, for our students to succeed. I would like to also add that um, I can speak for the time that I've been in the district. Our funds are being spent on students. How do we measure that? The data speaks for all of the all of what you observed in the previous presentation speaks to how we're being very fiscally responsible to ensure that our students holistically have what they need. I mentioned Read 180, and I also mentioned Gifted and Talented, as well as college placement programs for our students. When you look at the district in its totality, we are increasing the offerings for students that are on grade level and students that can be stretched at the previous board meeting, we are, there was an approval for a program specifically targeted at students that are on grade level and also need gifted and talented support. So it bears mentioning that our dollars are being spent to improve student performance and achievement and how do we know? We go back to the data. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you, Madam Superintendent. It is now time for public participation in accordance with board policy 0167. You have a podium there. There's a microphone. You may come there to the podium, state your name and your address. You have three minutes. Thank you. Good evening. Madam Superintendent, board members, and cabinet. Kathy Baumgartner, um, my address is 971 Toms River Road in Jackson, New Jersey, and I'm the proud principal of Asbury Park High School. I'm here this evening um, to support these young men behind me um, who have decided that they wanted to come here this evening to speak to you. 
Um, if you have ever visited me at the high school, I have a quote on my door that says, I see you, I hear you, you matter. So when my students come to me and they have an issue or a concern and they say to me, we need you and we want you to come and we want to come but we don't know how or what, then I'm here for them. So I present to you this evening, who is coming up? Or are you all coming up? Who's speaking? Okay, okay. Mr. Eric Brown. Good evening, everyone. My name is Eric Brown. I'm a high school student at Asbury Park. And I'd like to represent our coach and our basketball players standing behind. And the feelings I have for my coach is he has a bond with everyone on the team. And he respects how when we put the time in to come in the gym, and get better, he's all in for it. He does whatever for us on the court and outside the court. And that's, it's just help all of us do a lot and getting through tough times. We had a lot of meetings with everyone, all coaches, staff, to do what's right. That's about it. My name is Makai Jones. My name is Makai Jones. I'm also from Asbury Park High School. I've been a basketball player. This will be my third year. I'll also be a junior. L wasn't just like a coach us. He was also a father figure. He made sure he was good on the court and outside the court. He always been there for me when I lost my dad. He was also there for me when I had problems with my mom, when I had issues with family, period. He was just there. And it just hurts like to hear that he won't be with us no more because like he been there since day one, since middle school, since all that. We just wish, wish we could have him back. Raymond was going to talk, but he, he's, I can read it for you. All of this, Raymond? Okay. This is, say, can you say your name? Oh, my name, Raymond. I go to Asbury Park High School too. Okay. So, Raymond says, <clears throat> I feel like you should rehire Coach Marshall because everyone on the team has a special bond with their own coach, with coach on their own, and we all like him as more than a coach. He is more like a father to us. Coach L is one of the few people that never gave up on me and kept me going or gave me a reason to go even harder and earn what I want. He, he taught us all, he taught all of us a lot on and off the court. It was a lot of times I could have did something that would have got me in trouble, but I remember what Coach told me, I'm glad of that, and what he taught me, and I went about it a different way. Also, I always know that Coach wants the best for me and my teammates, no matter what, and he helped all of us become better young men. Before Coach came, we had Coach Coleman. We went like two and 13, I believe, and all we did at practice was scrimmage for two hours, then go home. I feel like he didn't really care about us as it was some days when we would be at the school for practice and he wouldn't even show up. I never had a coach that went as hard for me as Coach Marshall, and he made all of us love the game of basketball. He motivated us every day to get better because he pushes us all the time. And from the day we got coached, everyone has gotten better. Even just asking coach a simple question, you can learn a lot. I feel like his intentions for us, his intentions for you is always for the better and to help. Anyone else? No? Kirvin? That didn't look nice, y'all. <laughs> My name is Kirvin Herrick. I'm a student athlete at Asbury Park High School. And just to hear the news that coach would meet with us is it hurt us as a team. Probably everybody feels like 
But if I won't be the same when I coach, it's, I wish everybody to think about the decision you make before you truly make it. And I feel like it won't be the same when I'm there. So, okay. I just want to say, first of all, how proud I am of these young men. Um, they came to me and I just basically told them, if you're going to you know, show up, you show up and you present yourself well. Um, I told them how they needed to look and I see you made effort, so good job, good job. Um, you tried, yes. Oh, my time is up, my time is up. Just want to say thank you um, for listening to them and giving them your time. First of all, I would like to say this to the young men. All of you came here to voice your opinion, and it is very appreciated. You came here as young men, not as babies. You came here as you should, and you spoke. And I appreciate that, and I'm sure the other board members do as well. So we thank you for being here and using your voice, because that is your power. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Anyone else for public participation? Hello, my name is Jeanette Heron. I am the parent of Kervin Heron. And um, tonight my son came home and told me about the meeting about Coach Marshall. And once I heard about it, I was like, oh, what? You know, tonight I'm supposed to be in church, Bible study. Kervin is our musician. I said, well, you're gonna make this stop first. But um, one thing that I learned about Coach Marshall is as a parent, he was definitely a mentor for my son, and not only him, for all the team. Many a times, I would give them a ride home from a game, and I just saw the difference in them, how they have become mature and respectful. They watch what they say, not so much slang language. That's a big step in kids these days. And not only that, um, they're keeping their grades up. Kervin is an honor student, and I noticed that, you know, most all the students, when, they, when I give them a ride home, I always ask them, how's your grades, what are you doing? And Coach Marshall keeps up with that as well. And to hear that he will not be here, as a parent, when you finally have someone that communicate with the parent about your child, about their education, and then once everything is rolling good, then you're gonna pull that rug from underneath him, I am a parent that is involved, and I participate in whatever I can. You can ask Ms. Baumgartner. I mean, if, if the board needs me for anything or the school needs me, I'm there. I am there. And so whatever decision that you make about Coach Marshall, we need men, teachers, and coaches like Coach Marshall. We need that for these young men. We definitely need that. When my son was coming up in elementary school, that's one thing he said to me. Mom, every school that I went to every year, all of my teachers were female. And to me, for males, they need to see strong men. And the men with values and who, who they can follow after and mentor. And that's what I saw in Coach Marshall. So please make your decision, if you can, to keep him. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public participation? Before you leave, young man, I just want to say this again. I'm impressed with all of you, and I'm looking at how you're dressed. And you know, one of the things, yeah, I'm looking, you know, one of the things that our young men usually do, one of the things that I, I really don't like is the pants sagging, but I don't see that in you guys. You guys are gentlemen. 
And I want you to know something. In life, you're going to meet, there are going to be people that are going to come into your life. There's a season and a reason that they're there, okay? And you take advantage of that when they mentor you, when they help make a difference. But it's also up to you. It's up to what you decide to do. You're the captain of your ship. It's you who makes the right choices. And I need you to stay strong regardless of who comes into your life. Sometimes people come into your life and they're only here for a short period of time. But they have gotten you from point A to point D. And then it's up to you because then somebody else is going to come along. And you always maintain that openness and always seize every opportunity that comes your way. Always learn and remember that you as men, young men, have been given the authority to rule. You're powerful, but not so much here, up here. So you fill your heads with knowledge. And when you see someone that is trying to pull you away from what your goals are, you need to stay away from them. You need to stay focused on what it is. And so this coach has coached you to where you are right now, right? The question is, where are you going to go next? And be ready for the next person and the next person and the next person that comes into your life. I'm proud of all of you. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public participation? So it is now closed. State Monitor, you have a report for us, please. Acceptance. Acceptance of minutes. Could I have a motion for item 10A and B on A1? Mm -hmm. Second, please. Second. Question? Okay, roll call, Mr. Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Mr. Lotaraka? Yes. Mr. Pinckney? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Okay. Setien? And Ms. Others Anderson? Yes. Motions carry. On page A2, could I have a motion for items 11 and 12? Move it. Question? Okay. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Mr. Lauderaca? Yes. Mr. Pinckney? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Ms. Sabez Anderson? Yes. Motion's carried. Um, we're going to go into executive session for. Oh, I need a motion to go into executive session. Move. Okay. For the purpose of. <laughs> See? Okay, just a second. Oh. That's what we just want to do. Okay. Whereas the Open Public Meetings Act allows for the exclusion from discussion at the public portion of a meeting of certain matters as outlined below. And whereas the Asbury Park Board of Education wishes to discuss such matters made and will make such discussion public when a proper conclusion has been reached. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Asbury Park Board of Education will hold a closed executive session on this date, October 17, 2019, at Asbury Park, New Jersey, for the purposes as outlined and described below upon return action may be taken for which one number five student matter let's see student matter let's see number just say confidential student matter confident for the purpose of confidential student matter it's anticipated that we'll be in there for approximately we're going to be in a session for approximately 25 minutes formal action may be taken formal action may be taken and we'll return to public session at conclusion of the executive session. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. To request a consent agenda. 
Good evening, members of the board. Yes, I would like to request a consent agenda for items included on pages B1 to B8. Second question. Roll call, Mr. Hastings, please. Oh. So all items B1 to B8, Ms. Lozinski? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes, except I'm staying on uh, B1B. Ms. Breach? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Mr. Lanaraka? Yes. Mr. Pinkney? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Alvarez Anderson? Yes. All items carry. Okay, and Mr. Hastings, would you like to ask for a consent agenda? Yes, one moment, please. number one to C5 number 12 and let me note that on C4 9B that's the buildings and grounds facility use we discussed in workshop uh, is amended to include uh, personnel costs only Next. motion please Second. question okay mr. Uh, Hastings roll call please Ms. Lezinski? yes mr. Grillo yes Ms. breach yes. Mr. Lotteraka Yes. Mr. Pinckney? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Sabas Anderson? Yes. All motions carry. Need a motion to adjourn? Okay. See you next, well, see you, you know, never mind. Favor. next board meeting. Aye. Aye. Thank you.